All right, hey everyone, my name is Frank. Um, uh, like Ahmed mentioned, I work on an open source framework called SST. It's, uh, it's a framework that helps people deploy their apps and build their apps, deploy their apps to AWS. And uh, it's, you know, it's a developer tool, so you know, the only thing we care about is developer experience. And we hope to, you know, or I hope to share you know, some of the things I learned while working on it. All right, so um, I think we all heard like different versions of what you know developer experience is. Um, I've seen you know different speakers were having pretty good definitions. I think it all comes down to uh, everything, right? De developers, how do they hear about your product? Where do they hear about it? When their friends tell you what it is, do you understand what it does? Or without trying it, do you can you explain that to your friends? And uh, when you decide to try it, you go to the landing page, is the messaging clear? Is there a big ass, you know, get started button? Does that take to our doc? Does our doc have like clear steps on how to get started, create the first Hello World app? And, uh, and when they try it, does it work? Is it fast? Does it have like emojis in your in the CLI? Uh, when they run into issues, uh, where do they go for support? When they, when they Google, does it come up on, you know, Stack Overflow? When, when they go to OpenAI, does it show up? Can ChatGPT answer the question? You know, right, where do they go for support? And ultimately, you know, you're gonna make money when you're trying to sell them like a companion product or like a paid service or self-hosted version of your service. Uh, do they feel like they're scamming them or do they feel like you're actually providing, providing value, value there? So, um, so, so like we are pretty much went through some, some of them and I'm gonna share, you know, what we learned and how we try to you know, tackle some of the issues. Uh, like a quick background on me, um, my name is Frank, I created SST uh, with two other folks. Um, I've been working on AWS for about like 14 years, around 2009, when they only had like two or three services. So it was at the time when, you know, the console wasn't like scary. You go in there, there's EC2, there's S3, that, that, that's it. And, uh, and over the years, we worked on you know, a couple of pro projects. And for around 2016, we heard this thing about Lambda. And we were like, oh, it sounds pretty great. Don't have to manage servers anymore. Don't have to manage you know, scaling and everything. Let's try Lambda out, right? It sounds so, super promising. You just gave them your code. They, they does everything for you. Are we tried to manage to get it working in a couple, couple, of, couple of weeks. And, uh, and we, we end up becoming AWS expert because we had to learn you know, where do you look at logs like CloudWatch? Where do you do permissions as IAM? Where do you set up a, like, like a Lambda function? It just runs the code, right? What if you want to create an API? There's an API gateway. To so do something really simple, you need to learn about like 10 or dozen, you know, AWS services. And, uh, and we just put everything we learned onto a guide. It's called Serverless Stack Guide. If you go serverless-stack.com, I think the guide is still up there. Uh, and we build the seed, which is you know a service that help people deploy you know serverless apps. I'm gonna skip all that, but uh, but after a couple of years of working in this space, we realize uh, it's so complicated. Instead of writing the guide, why don't we create something that's just like dumbed down a bunch of these stuff and uh, people don't have to. Our guide is like 600 pages. Like instead of reading that, why don't you just try out our tool? So uh, three years ago, we start building SST. Um, cool, so SST is the easiest way to build on AWS. Uh, recently, Fireship made a video about SST. Uh, it's like really short, 100 seconds. So I thought I would play that. It does a better job than me trying to explain what it does. I think here it is. SST in open source. Can I turn the volume by any chance? Oh. Tool that actually makes it fun to build full stack web applications with AWS. The problem with Amazon Web Services is that it has too many web services and putting them all together in a unified package can be extremely complicated. SST fixes this for web developers by representing backend infrastructure as code, TypeScript code, making it possible to integrate features like S3 storage buckets, Lambda functions with API gateway, databases like RDS and DynamoDB, Cognito user authentication, along with many other features without ever touching the AWS 
US console, and it has built-in deployment support for frameworks like Next.js, Astro, and SvelteKit. Once initialized, it provides a variety of simple constructs that represent infrastructure declaratively. Under the hood, this code is based on Amazon's Cloud Development Kit and Cloud Formation. These constructs are grouped together in stacks, which can be deployed together or run locally with the SST dev command. It provides a local development environment with live reloading and provides a web-based console to manage your stack minus the typical AWS pain points. To get started, you'll need the AWS CLI with credentials set up locally. Next, run the npx create SST command to drop in a deployment solution to your favorite framework or initialize it as a standalone project. This will scaffold a mono repo and the packages directory is where you write the code to power the back end. Inside here, we can write serverless functions in TypeScript that are powered by AWS Lambda and use API Gateway as the front door. To see it in action, run the dev command, and that will automatically deploy the required resources to the cloud, as we can see here on the AWS console. What's really cool though is that we now have a local development environment, and if we go and change the code in the function, it's immediately reflected in the cloud. In addition, it spins up the local SST console, where you can view logs and manage your stacks. A stack is where you define your infrastructure as code. In the stacks directory, we have an API that can map URLs to Lambda functions. Pretty simple, but we can expand on this by adding an event bus, which is able to trigger Lambda functions based on different events that happen in the background, like when a new database record is created. From there, we can enable file uploads by adding the bucket construct to the stack. While we're at it, we might add a Postgres database with RDS and add the auth construct to enable user authentication. And we can even define cron jobs here that run on a schedule and point to a specific Lambda function. And finally, when the stack is complete, we can add it to the SST config file, then deploy it to the cloud with a single command. This has been SST in 100 seconds. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. All right, I'm done. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good uh, overview. When I first saw the video, I'm like, wow, this is, he understood what we do better than I did. Uh, and uh, yeah, so with SST, it's, it's, it's a developer tool, right? So all we care about is developer experience, right? There's nothing else to it. Whether we succeed or not is whether you know, developers like it or not. Uh, I worked really hard to find two tweets on Twitter that shows people like SST, and there you go. Um, all right, so how do we actually think about dev tools um, or developer experience? I think dev tools are kind of new. It's a new class of like software companies where you make something free, eventually you have some you know, paid offering, like whether it's self-served or or it's a commercial open source license. You can't see this with like, Next.js in Brazil, right? That's one version of it. You also see with PostHog where you can host it on AWS, but but you know, but if you want to get the, the premium premium features, you know, like get a license from them. Um, so unfortunately, existing uh, SaaS playbook doesn't quite work, right? Like you've seen like Datadog and people try to do this where we don't have Datadog speaker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. All right, if you've seen Datadog try to do this where it's the same product and they just tweak the messaging to, to developers, right? And I think they're working on it. It's getting better. And uh, um, so the way we like to think about it is kind of from ground up, right? Trying to see, you know, which startup's doing a good job. Like Airbnb, Airbnb is doing a pretty good job. I remember hearing, like, Brian Chesky's, like, thought experiment on what is a 12-star experience for Airbnb where like zero star is you check in, the host is not there, right? You get locked out. A five star experience is like you, it matches the experience you get going to Hilton where the room is super clean, clean uh, bed and hot shower, towels are there. What's a 10 star experience? He's saying a 10 star experience for Airbnb is you get off the plane, there's like 2,000 people cheering for you and then people trying to get an autograph. And what is 12 star experience? 12 star experience is it's Elon Musk picking up from the airport, giving you a tour in, like, in his like, spacecraft, and then comes back, you, go, you drive to your hotel. Right? It's kind of funny how, the way he put it, but, but it's really, really about from 0 to 12, how far can you push the developer, developer experience. Right? If you close your eyes and be like, if I were to try to storyboard like, like a noob trying to use SST, right? what's the first thing he's going to see? How is he going to hear about SST all the way to make deploying his first app to, to AWS. Um, so I kind of break down what we learn in like three areas. It's like do less, 
you can tell from my slides, it's really minimal. <laughs> it's too light, do less. Like I think the smaller the scope it is, the better job you can you can you can, you can work on it. Uh, we have this idea of vertical develop, development. It's like three of us. Everyone's a developer. Uh, everyone works on his own track where you go into Discord, talk to the users, right? Figure out what to implement next. Go implement it. Go back to the user, figure out does it work. Re cut a release. Uh, tweet it out on Twitter. Go promote it. If you want to make a promotional video, do it yourself. So everyone does that individually, right? So even today, I'm here speaking, right? Like, I'm not a good speaker, but I'm just here to, to show that you know, everyone does their own track, right? Um, so everyone takes ownership. I'm going to go into details of why that matters in some of the areas. And the third point is it's really not just about you, right? No one uses your tool on an island, right? Everyone uses a tool with Datadog and, and all the other tools. And, uh, and how do you make sure they have a good experience, right? Because they, they like your tool, once it integrates with other tool, it sucks, then, then your product sucks, right? There's no other ways of looking at it. Um, I just like disclaimer, right? Like, uh, developer, to developer tools is pretty new. Um, I think we're still learning. Um, so most of the things I, I talk about might be wrong, and, but hopefully there are some ideas that you guys can borrow, and, uh, and hopefully the talk is entertaining. It's the least I could do. Uh, all right, the first area is like, how do we build our product uh, with like developer experience in mind? Um, cool, all right. I have this idea of like, go deep and not wide. It's pretty obvious, right? Like, people have, like, AWS is a monster. You can, you can deploy Kubernetes, you can deploy Docker, func uh, Docker uh, uh, containers on there, you can have your cluster, you can do everything on there. Uh, but we are, we are starting just by focusing on modern apps, right? Modern apps that are using managed AWS services like DynamoDB, RDS, uh, even Bus. So instead of you getting an EC2 server hosting like RabbitMQ, you can use the SQS service, right? It's like modern apps and modern front end. Um, and within that, there's like Python, different languages. We're trying to focus on Node. We think, you know, the TypeScript gives a really good you know, end-to-end -end type system where there's lesser mistakes people are making. And even within Node.js, we want to have, be opinionated to be like, hey, we are just gonna start by supporting um, uh, TypeScript, and we're gonna support, say, not support, we're gonna optimize for PNPM, right? You know, like Yarn, sometimes it, 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 it's, it's cluttered, and, and, and NPM might be slow. So all right, let's pick the best experience. What, what I'm trying to do here is to figure out one setup that works super well with SST, and then kind of show people what the paradise looks like. And it's up to you if you want to choose that or swap some component out, right? If you swap something out, it's up to you. But only thing I can guarantee is if you follow, follow our way of building apps, at least that is going to be, that's going to have like a super good developer experience. Um, yeah, so least amount of features, but, but the ones that I do need to be better, like 100 times better than alternatives. Um, just to give a quick example, like local environment, right? Back in the days, remember, like, doing Rails stuff, it's, it's perfect, right? Like, you get, like, a Rails server, you have, like, Postgres server, right? On your local, you install Ruby, set up Rails, set up Postgres, everything works. It's, like, 99% mimicking the, the prod server, and people kind of perfected with Docker, right? It got a bit slower, but, but it's a lot more consistent. And then cloud is like a shit show where, where you have no local environment, right? You're using, right? You're using permission systems Cognito, right? There's no a local version of Cognito to run on your computer. There isn't a local version of API Gateway, local version of SQS, even bus, there's nothing. Like, what do you do, right? Some people, they want to mock. I think that's a very common GitHub library called like local stack where you can, they really try to build AWS on your, on your computer. Uh, and uh, so we are thinking, okay, let's, we, this is something we need to fix. So we came out with this, without going into too much detail, we come up with this idea called Live Lambda where uh, your local environment actually sits in the cloud. But the problem is every time you change your code and to upload your code, that's going to take, you know, one or two seconds if, to compile the code and upload it. And if you change your common library that's used by the 20, 30 functions, 
it's going to take you know like a minute to upload the code change. And, and, and surprisingly, people have been living with that developer experience in the serverless world for, for a couple of years already. Uh, so what we do is we kind of set up this bridge with, uh, set up this connection with your, your Lambda function. So when your Lambda function gets called, sends a message to our, like a socket message to our, to our local computer, it runs your code there and sends response back. Uh, so we kind of try to have that bridge set up so that for each region speed, when you make a change, you don't have to wait for three seconds, right? You don't have to open up YouTube. You just, it just takes like 50 MS, kind of similar to you know, the testing thing, library load that like we just talked about, where, where as you're making change, the, the code is actually reflected. And just now, it's actually reflected on the cloud. Um, another thing we need to fix is, like I said, right, people don't just use SST, they use it with AWS, well, obviously, with AWS. And right, AWS's problem now is your problem, right? Their console is like ugly and, and slow, then it's, yeah, SST is ugly and slow, right? Because you're deep. after you deploy and to go check the logs, right, you have to go to the console, uh, literally people have like 20 tabs open, one for you know, each Lambda function they, 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 they look at. And, and this screen, right, uh, it's like a max, max 13 inch MacBook screen. You can, you can see like half of an invocation up there. Right, definitely not the ideal experience. Um, right, so we just have to build out the uh, the console. Right, it's it. Yeah, we just the, the thing. The, the the thing here is you really need to keep the scope small. Otherwise, you know, if we were to rebuild AWS console, I don't think I can do a better job than them. It just they have so many things going on there. By having like really niche focus, you're able to build out like a subset of the feature set in like a prettier way. Um, and, and same thing, right, if you're using the AWS CDK, SDK, we have to submit a bunch of patches to AWS libraries to make sure, you know, our C, because we're using them as a dependency, our CLI, when we do SSD dev or SSD deploy, it used to take three seconds to put up. Uh, we would have to patch a lot of their, um, their libraries and uh, submit pull requests. So now it's kind of down to 500 MS. So I think it's like the shitty experience is not like one big problem is usually like, you know, like a thousand cuts where you have to really take each one, make incremental changes on, in each area. Um, yeah, so, so I think it's like, you need to be super opinionated about um, what you do. You know, when people come to you and say, hey, I want to use SST to do this. It's like, no, that's not a right, like we don't recommend that. And we should only support like the one single use case, like I mentioned, one setup that works super well, right? AWS is like a buffet, right? People want to host Next.js on AWS. There are like, like Beanstalk, Lyceo, Amplify, App Runner, Fargate, S3 Plus, Lambda. And uh, right, no one knows like which one to use when, um, again, console is bad because you, had, you try to stuff all those features in there. Um, so we just be super opinionated to tell people like, oh, if you want to do Next.js to deploy that to AWS, we're going to deploy to S3 and Lambda because they're cheap, they have a free tier, so that when you need to spin up your like, pull request uh, environments, they are free. So instead, if you were to use Fargate or Beanstalk or Lightsail, right, like every pull request, if you want like a preview environment, that's going to cost you like five bucks, right? Larger teams have hundreds of those, right? It could get expensive. Um, and we need to be very picky on what other tools our users are using with SST. Like an example is a lot of people use Prisma to manage their uh, data, to talk to a database, which is, works super well, but they have been, um, they does a really good job in the non-serverless case, but the bundle side is so big, right? If you try to stuff that into a Lambda function, it adds about 700 MS to the code start, right? So there's something we have to say, I know it's popular, um, don't use it. And uh, no, we, we, no, we have to, like, because, uh, and we, we actually now, we are kind of sponsoring and helping, not sponsoring, we are, we are actually helping teams that are building alternatives to Prisma just for, you know, Lambda use case. It's called Drizzle, uh, if you get a chance to check it out. Um, yeah, and, uh, and say no to features, right? There are, well, we made this mistake, like, a lot of times where, we got live Lambda working for Node. People want it for Python, want it for Java. We are so itchy to implement them, man, because it sounds really cool that, oh, 
um, SSD works for all languages, right? But, but that's just, you know, a, a stray is fast to implement, but think about all the bugs you need to fix, right? We're not a Python or a Java experts. So it's going to be a nightmare down the road. So really, it's important to say no to features at least early on. Um, and and uh, this is obvious, right? You're going to use your own tools. Uh, but it's kind of hard when you work on the uh, dev tool, right? For the longest time, I've been working on SST, but all of our users have used SST more than I do, right? I feel like I don't have authority to t or I don't have enough experience to tell them to do things in certain ways. So the way we kind of hacked it is to build the SST console, right? We built that using SST, deployed to AWS. So just the way to to push yourself to do like to use our tool like day to day like not as a toy project, um, but actually like use it seriously. Uh, it also has a it also kind of shows user what's what is capable of doing, right? People go to SSD console, see this fast. They say, okay, I see. This is what I expect when I try to use SST. Um, cool. That's like kind of how we uh, approach product. For for support, support is a, is, is a big area. We have about like five thousand people in our Discord. Um, and uh, usually for open source, the support, people have the ex expectation of, you know, it's not a paid service. Um, they, they feel the team is not obligated to respond to them. So we kind of want to set a bar of, like, everyone that asks a question, we want to respond in four hours. And any blocking issues need to be resolved in, in 24 hours. It's nothing crazy, just what you would expect in the, from support from any paid service. Um, it kind of goes back to you know, Airbnb's like, thought experiment, right? Uh, when they have run into the issue, like how far are you pushing the star system, right? Do you want to give them like a three-star experience or like seven-star experience? And right now we try to, re um, yeah, I, th I think through this, I think you also get like uh, uh, very good feedback from user directly and uh, developers, right? They they don't want to talk to like support people. They want to talk to developers, and uh, so that's the part of like vertical development we're talking about. Where, right? You're gonna do everything. You're gonna talk to developers. You build it. You know, if there's a bug, you're fixing it. Uh, so the system we come up with is like a first responder plus domain owner approach. You know, every time. You contact any support, even Apple support, right? You go through this five minutes of BS where it's like, oh, um, I can't check, you know, the, uh, right? It's the, the screen, my, my, my screen is not working, right? Can you, can you make sure it's, the brightness is not adjusted? Man? I feel they're insulting me, right? I've, I'm, I'm in tech, I, I know what I'm doing. But they have to go through this, I almost feel like a five minute of their script before I can get to the actual support. Um, so that's the thing we kind of want to uh, get away from by we doing the support ourselves. So we kind of divide responsibility between like first responder and the domain owner. So the person that's least uh, busy on the team, so he's a responder. So every day go through, a couple times a day, go through Discord messages, like answer them. Uh, and most of them are low hanging fruit, which should be pretty, pretty basic. We try to swap that, replace that thing with a, a, a chat GPT support. Um, Right, but for the ones that actually needs some attention, right, he just dispatched that to whoever is working on that feature. So we kind of have like pretty clear uh, lines of like you know who because because when someone works on a feature, the reason he's working on it is he he knows the most about it. He's super passionate about it, and and there's a very clear boundary of his stuff and my stuff, right? So it's easy for the first responder to be able to say, oh, this sounds like it's his problem. He should go fix it. Um, so we kind of have this division. I think this division is also scales. You could argue it, it probably won't work when our team grows larger, but in the foreseeable future, uh, I think up to 10, 20 people, I think this might be scalable, which we yet to see. Uh, I think you just keep adding on to a uh, domain owner so that you know, each person you know, fix their own stuff. Um, and hopefully you're doing less. You don't, you, 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 like, your, uh, right, the, the things that we made a mistake of ha supporting Python early on. Now, no one on the team wants to answer any Python-related questions, right? That's the kind of the pain we have, right? And whereas Java, we, we just say, no, we're not doing Java. 
It's also because Java is kind of slow to build, so we don't get that you know, library load feedback. But until, but we showed people what, what Node.js is capable of, and then now we actually have you know, Java expert from the community coming in. They're like, oh, you should compile in a certain way with certain flags. Now we do have Java support, but it's almost community contributed. So that when there's an issue, it's his issue. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it's actually his issue. We actually just try to uh, have, you know, get them, be, have them become, uh, you know, advocates, right? And, uh, and, and they also like it, right? They're taking ownership of, you know, the stuff they, they put in. Um, and really quick, we also try to consolidate our, you know, support channels where, you know, GitHub issues, you know, GitHub pull request, uh, Discord, um, a forum, everything. We try to pull them into Discord, the place where that's most welcoming and people helping each other. And once you get to a certain size, hopefully the net network effect kicks in where if you give people full hour uh, support time, people feel they owe you something, right? Try to help each other. So that's, um, so right now we're seeing like a lot of benefit of, of, of kind of investment we, we put on early, we put in early on. Um, and marketing, right? Right, we can't afford to have a marketing person, a marketing person, right? It's uh, at, at a startup. It's, um, and also because developers want to be sold by developers, right? They're, they're weird, they're like cheap. Um, you know, people are making 100K, 200K a year. When they go to McDonald's, they even, you know, donate a dollar to a charity, but they will not pay, you know, $15 to like, like Wix or, or Squarespace when their wife tell them to help them build something. Like I can I can do it with Next.js. I know React. I know Svelte. Right? They they they're they're not. You know. And Amazon has this free tier. Why I'm paying fifteen dollars? Um, they also think they are, uh, you know, smart. I have this funny story. I just went to. I have two kids. We're in the bigger car. They're getting older, so we went to a Hyundai dealer, and uh, right, it goes pretty well. They like, oh, you should get an SUV, right? Eight seater. We we're like, yeah, that sounds spacious because we need to put strollers and stuff at the back. So end of the day, we, we left, and as we were walking out, we saw the guy were ta that was like selling us the car, he drove away in Audi, right? I'm like, and his manager also kind of helped us try to, you know, talk, explain how the financing, everything works, right? He drove away in Mercedes. I'm like, should I trust them? Should I trust them on their the opinions on, 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 on the car? Um, right, so developers, they, they think they're smart, right? Especially they are approached by <laughs> by, you know, out, like, like marketing people and they think, you know, like, I'm smarter than you. I can, the code is open source. I can just, I can just go look at it, right? Why, why are you trying to sell me on this? Uh, and, yeah, they, they, yeah, they respect developers. <laughs> it's for other developers. Um, so just to, um, right, so how do we connect with developers, right? It seems like we really need this intimate connection with them. So the thing which we are experimenting right now is, um, you know, one of us is always streaming our work on, on Twitch. Uh, so as he's working on, on um, SST, he tried to stream like two hours a day. People can drop by and, uh, and ask him questions or why certain things are implemented a certain way. And he's also making $20 from Twitch, just from the ads and everything. <laughs> um, we also try to stream all our design meetings uh, so this week we will try to roll out. You can deploy your Docker containers to to Fargate using SST, and uh, none of us is a Docker person. So so in the design meeting we just host it publicly, and people are just you know teaching us you know th what is important, what is not, kind of trying to build this like relationship with them, and you also get this constant stream of feedback. Um, that's what I like about developer tools, right? You're a developer, you're selling, you're selling to developer, you're using the tool you're building, it, right? It's, um, that's like a really good like, loop that we're, I feel we're going through. Um, and also for marketing, it's not really just, you know, it's not really just about you. Um, because the traditional SaaS playbook on marketing is, you know, SEO ads, uh, blog posts, um, where, 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 where that content is more catered towards people that already kind of know your tool 
and they just want to learn more about it. Um, I think the, what we figure out from you know, our marketing initiative is uh, just try to get people's attention, right? The way what you're selling them is they're not going to understand what SSC does in, like, um, in a blog post or in a tweet. You just need them to know that if you need to deploy Next.js on AWS, there's SST, right? If you want to create a cron job API on AWS, that's SST. Anything AWS, there's SST, right? Just need to build that connection in their mind. And that's the thing we're trying to experiment right now, just to catch people's uh, attention. Uh, I've got a quick video to show you guys. This is the... Yeah, this video we made about uh, half a year ago about when we were launching the um, Open Next. It's also open source thing that like, we created just to... You know, Next.js, despite that it's open source, right? you get the best of it only if it's deployed to Brazil, and uh, a lot of people want to deploy elsewhere on AWS. It's super hard. And so, okay, why don't we try to create an interface where you, know, you can just do that? So, so instead of talking about how to use Vercel in, uh, how to use Next.js in SST, we create this video. The following advertisement is intended for Jim Booney only. It's free. Next.js. We're giving you function. It's free. We're giving you a deployment. It's Next.js. Free. It's a free deployment for you, Jim. This is free. Next.js. Well, you got to bring the code that the deployment is free. Two functions. No servers. It's free. You push a commit to your free Next.js, we got you the deployment. It's a serverless deployment. It's free. It's got a CDN in the front. I'm not carrying this around all day. It's for your deployment. Free Next.js, I'll keep my pants. Jim, come get your damn functions. It's a free deployment! Jim, I got Next.js. Jim, does it get better than this? Jim! The deployment is free! Jim! It's a free deployment. It's free Next.js. <laughs> right, so... So hopefully by that, we kind of capture people. Um, whenever they think about Next.js on AWS, they think about SST. Right, that's all we're trying to do. Uh, I think we're running kind of short on time, so I'll just... Uh, how do I go back? All right, I'll just quickly go through the rest of the slide. All right, what's next step for us? It's, remember this concentric circle, right? So now we're slowly, slowly to expand to you know, Python, Docker, maybe non-modern apps on AWS. But every time we expand, going through the same, same loop of um, right, re-evaluate the de developer experience, right? Because when you expand, developer experience can only get shittier. And uh, so we ha constantly have to rebuild the product, rewrite the product, redo the landing page, redo the doc, redo the marketing uh, for every time we're trying to expand the scope. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's it. Uh, Frank, SSD, all right. <laughs>